<clears throat> we will call the rules committee to order at 105. Uh, it's not like for me to be late. I had business to take care of, but at this time, we will get this rules committee in order and start the meeting. Councillor Thornton, would you please bless the meeting? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Be with us as we do the business of the Cherokee Nation here and guide us and help us get through this in an open fashion. And so, Heavenly Father, please be with our troops that are in harm's way and bless our veterans. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you for that, Councilor Thornton. Uh, Shelly, uh, roll call. Yes, sir. Joe Bird. Honey. And Frankie Hargis. Present. Bill Anglin. Here. Keith Austin. Here. Jack Baker. Oh, here. Harley Bezzer. Here. Sean Crittenden. Rodney. John Garvin. Rodney. Wanda Hatfield. Rex Jordan. Here. Dick Lay. Here. Curtis Snell. Here. Denise Taylor. Here. David Thornton. Honey. Victoria Vesquez, David Walking Stick, Brian Warner. We do have a quorum. Okay, we do have a uh, quorum, so at this time, uh, I'd entertain approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, thank you. Uh, drop down to reports. Uh, Marshal Shannon Buell would uh, like to <coughs> announce before he gives his report, his son was the valedictorian of Sequoia High School. Uh, I had the pleasure and honor of introducing him. He's accepted to go to Brown University uh, mm -hmm. on a full ride, which is... Uh, well, it's not full, but it's better than it would be without. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got a ride over there, right? Yes. So, and he had, uh, you know, some some college credit credit hours that's going to really save your back pocket some so yes. you know it, I thought it was an honor just to have him there and uh, he gave a, a lengthy speech but a valley term deserves that yeah he uh, uh, he went concurrent in college while he was a junior and senior and he has 40 <coughs> college hours so wow. yeah helps me out a lot I'm, I'm glad <laughs> to hear so uh, well good afternoon uh, my report stands. If there's any questions, feel free to, and don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, I would like to bring uh, attention to a person in the room, uh, John Payton. He's in the back. If you'd go ahead and stand up, John. Uh, John is our head of security for the complex. You, you know him. He usually comes and has lunch with you. Uh, <laughs> he beats me here, I think. But one thing John uh, did this week, uh, he does stuff every single day for the tribe. He, he's one of these uh, servants of the tribe that never asks for anything, never, uh, never wants attention, does, does the job of the tribe. And we had the archery uh, camp this week up there, and we've had some thunderstorms going on. So he arranged with Sequoia to have a school bus setting up here at the archery range in case those kids got in some foul weather that they could get them up to the Sequoia gym. And he did this on his own. So, I mean, this is just one of many examples of what your employees are doing out here at the tribes. <laughs> are there any questions? Thank you, John. Any questions for our marshal? Have we, uh, have we secured that uh, cross-deputization Sequoia County yet? Uh, we still have a, a cross step with Sequoia County. Okay, uh, we, it's, it's in place. Yes, we've, we've never lost it. However, we don't work <clears throat> criminal cases in Sequoia County Okay. Uh, on state land. The sheriff doesn't want us down there. And quite frankly, the sheriff uh, has tried to kick the drug task force out of the county now four times. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't like people messing with his friends, I guess. So. Okay. Uh, it becomes problematic, so we just don't go there. Uh, if we have Indian country issues, we will go to Indian country. Okay. Uh, but other than that, <coughs> we don't go to Square County. Okay. So. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, Councilor Thornton. You you do go to Cherokee Nation Park, don't you? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> That's a good part. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, good report. Thank right, you, thank sir. You. 
Next, we have Office Attorney General, Mr. Todd Hembry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make my report brief. I know you're very busy this, this afternoon. Uh, the Office of Attorney General always remains uh, busy on, uh, uh, on many fronts. Uh, the one issue that I would want to highlight uh, during uh, this presentation is an item that will be on your agenda later on uh, today, and that is revisions uh, to our civil code. Uh, as I have said before, our civil code needs to be uh, not only brought to date, but needs to be made, uh, in my opinion, uh, the example of for all of Indian country. Uh, the uh, Dollar General case has yet to be decided. It is now the Otis case uh, uh, from this, this Supreme Court term without an opinion. Uh, I had often thought after the, the, the passing of uh, Justice Scalia, that it would be a 4-4 tie. Well, at this point, <coughs> I would venture to guess that it's not going to be a 4-4 tie, that we would have a decision. Um, and that uh, uh, because if it would have been a 4-4 tie, we would have gotten a slip opinion by, by now. Um, Tuesday, uh, there is a very good chance that this, this decision will be handed down on Tuesday. Uh, you know, regardless of what that decision is, it is imperative that the Cherokee Nation uh, bring together a, an objective uh, uh, civil code that uh, yeah, is fair for all parties, plaintiffs and defendants, and ensures that, uh, uh, that the civil process and the due process is, are there for Cherokee litigants, uh, precisely what the issues uh, that are argued in the Dollar General case. So I hope you've had time to look over that civil code. I hope you have, uh, uh, that we are able to answer any questions that you have uh, on that later on today. And I would encourage its pa passing uh, because it will, uh, I do believe that uh, uh, in the very, very near future that we will get a, a decision on uh, Dollar General and that a, uh, uh, an up-to-date and uh, progressive civil code will be needed. Uh, with that, I would entertain any questions that the uh, committee members would have. Yes, uh, Councilor Watkins, Todd, the, with the uh, are you guys helping with registration any with getting like court orders to like uh, buy statistics on obtaining birth certificates, uh, adoption decrees, so forth? I'm not aware of uh, any recent uh, request of that regard, but I, I will tell you that anytime we, we do get a, uh, a request from any of our departments, be it uh, ICW or, or registration or uh, sometimes from the tax commission, uh, we, we assist them in, in obtaining the information that they, that they request. Okay, that, that's, that's favorable to hear. I'm going to have uh, some people registration to contact you. On some, it doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes they need a court order, and it, I guess our our courts are just good state courts, and so they are. Those, they are those absolutely are, and we would we would stand ready to assist uh, them or, or any other department in, in saving any type of uh, court action. That's what we're here for. Okay, thank you, AG. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? Good report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman. We'll be anxious to hear that decision. When it uh, comes down, I will make sure that the <coughs> hyperlink gets sent to, to all of you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next we have uh, Ms. Gwen Terrapin with us. Good afternoon. Um, I know I sound like I'm, re I'm a repeating record every month, so I'll throw one on you. I got a new FOIA request the <laughs> other day, so now we have four with two outstanding instead of just one. Um, of course, the website's been updated with all of the information, and all of you should have received a copy of uh, the request that we've gotten, except for the new one that I got in yesterday. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm continuing to go ahead and work on putting those links on there for all of our requests so that anyone will be able to review the documents that are publicly available. And then on a side note, to all of our veterans and to everyone that is serving or has family serving, I just hope that everyone has a blessed and safe Memorial Day weekend. Well, thank you very much. Any questions for Gwen? Just like to commend you and your staff for keeping us uh, updated. 
and catching up on all these requests that we've had in the past. You guys are doing a good job. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Tax Commission, Sharon Swepston. Afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I think you have my report. Um, I'll try to address any questions that you might have. Councilor Taylor. I just have one, and it is if you have considered um, registering tagging airplanes. Has that ever been pursued? There, there was some questions asked on it at one time, and I'll, I'll admit that's been several years ago, and I would have to go back and look to see what we can and can't do but right now i don't believe that's even in our code that allows us okay. to do that and i so, didn't know how that was done i just knew that that would be a significant <coughs> revenue source um if it was something that we could do it's something i'll check on registration i guess is what it would be not necessarily right registration would be a tag necessarily yeah. but it would be <laughs> registration <laughs> but i will check on that anybody else sharon you always give us a good report okay. thank you Thank you. Self-governance. I'm here. Karen, yeah, you're here. Yeah, we started to put you towards the front on I know. this bus. That's what she said, there. so I was, I was going to be here today, so you wouldn't put me to the front. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. I think you have my report. If there are any <coughs> questions, I'd be glad to answer them. If not, I can find the answer out for you, maybe. Any questions for, for Karen? I have one I'll throw at you. Through our self-governance agreement, uh, could, can we look into that, the veterans? We were looking for a liaison for the Veterans Administration to have the credentials like Rogan Noble had at one time. He was able to help a lot of our veterans with, with uh, applications and any type of needs they might have. And it was a special cert certification that he had. Now, we can either go back through the state and get certified, but we as a self-governance tribe can we not start to establish a criteria that, that we would concur with ourselves? Yes. As a matter of fact, at the last Tribal Interior Budget Committee meeting, that was one of the topics that was discussed, and that's what they're working on right now is trying to get it to go directly from VA to the tribes rather than having to be funneled through the state. So mm -hmm. they are... We are working on that through the Good. Tribal Interior Budget Committee. Okay. Appreciate that. Yeah. I know it's something that's really needed. Um, anybody else? Okay. Doing a good job. Thank you. Okay. Gaming Commission, Mr. Jamie Hummingbird. I don't see him. Does he have a replacement? No. We'll go ahead and drop down to Human Service Resources. I see Mr. Dr. Nason Morton back there. If Jamie shows up, we'll let him come off the bench. Good afternoon. It has been um, oh, last month pretty much just a paperwork month. Does anyone have any questions regarding um, anything in HR? Okay. Well, everyone must be pleased, uh, Doctor. Uh, Thank you're you. You're doing a good job. Walking stick, are you good? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that report, sir. Okay. Old business, none pending. Uh, new business. Uh, Councillor uh, Hargis, what you got to say on those um, nominations there? I would like to table no uh, number one and number two. Ms. Hathcote was unable to be here today, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to join us next month. Okay. Uh, number one and two's table for uh, Sandra Hathcote. Okay, dropping down number three, uh, Councilor Baker. Yes, this is a resolution confirming the nomination of Evan McLemore as a board member of Cherokee Nation Administrative Appeals Board. And he is one of our large citizens, I'm happy to say. And I make a motion that be approved. Second. And he is here today. Okay, you want to come to the table there? We've got a motion and a second. <coughs> Discussion? Anybody got any questions? Okay. Is this a first term appointment or a reappointment? First time. First time. First time. Uh, <coughs> this is a uh, vacancy that was created with the resignation of uh, Jim Cosby, who was an EAB uh, a board member. Mr. McMore is a Cherokee citizen, as uh, Mr. Baker said, from uh, uh, the Tulsa area and uh, is a practicing attorney and 
uh, has a, a very strong uh, and good reputation uh, in the uh, Tulsa legal community. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, Councilor Beck. I appreciate his willingness to serve in this class state. Absolutely. And, and I would just like to say that I appreciate the opportunity. Sure. Okay. And if all anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to field them. Okay. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. This is Leg Legislative Act. Uh, Councilor Taylor, you want to take that? I would be glad to. Uh, here we are. It's a resolution authorizing the Cherokee Nation to assume indebtedness, authorizing the assignment of a loan agreement from Cherokee Nation Waste Management, LLC, and granting a limited consent to be sued and declaring an emergency. And I move for its approval. Second. Okay, got a motion, second. Any discussion? Uh, can, can someone explain explain this? Sarah. Sarah, right here. Good afternoon. Um, so this is a resolution which would just be moving indebtedness that currently exists in Cherokee Nation Waste Management, LLC, which is wholly owned by the Cherokee Nation and is currently um, the group that operates the landfill. They have a debt. Um, it's about $1.5 million debt for equipment that they took out in 2014. We want to move that debt from the LLC over to the Cherokee Nation itself. So the Cherokee Nation will be responsible for that debt instead of the LLC. Um, and also, this includes a consent to be sued so that if the bank, if we didn't pay our loan to the bank, the bank could sue us to get the money that we owe them back. So that's the, the short version of what we're trying to accomplish with this resolution. Okay. Councilor Walker, stick. Was this the equipment that we approved three years ago? The compactor and yeah. dozer? Uh -huh. That's correct. Really? So it never paid itself off? Well, it hasn't yet. I mean, they've made all of the scheduled payments. It's not in arrears, and there's no issue with that. Um, so it's just we're moving it from, from one location in the Cherokee, well, into an, an entity of the Cherokee Nation over to the Cherokee Nation itself. What was explained to us, though, when, when they done this proposal was that uh, the business, the, the, the landfill was going to flourish. They had a plan put in place that was going to make money to pay the equipment off. Right. Well, and they have made all of the payments on it. It was never scheduled to be paid off this quickly anyway. Um, but the landfill, I would say, you know, economically flourish is not the word I would use. It's continued to lose money um, over the years. And so it has to be, um, So they, but they have been making payments on it, so it's not behind or anything like that. But we're wanting to um, eliminate the Cherokee Nation Waste Management Entity and move the landfill back under the Cherokee Nation, which is where it started back before the, the LLC was created. So we're going to put the Cherokee Nation Waste Management Group out and put the landfill back under the control of the Cherokee Nation itself. Okay. I, I apologize for voting for that. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. Okay, Councilor Garvin. Uh, what's the comparable on our interest rates in the old loan and the new loan? So the, the loan will can all of the terms of the loan will be the same. The, the terms that were accepted by the LLC at that time, those terms will be the same terms that we will um, have it at the Cherokee Nation. So none of the terms will change, none of the amounts will change. We're just moving it straight over from one entity over to the Cherokee Nation itself. Also, where is this bank? This, this is Welch State Bank. Where is it located? In Welch. I think. <laughs> North. North up there by. Uh, the Nita big cabin area, which is in the Cherokee Nation. Yes, right. Yeah. That's my home. Councilor <laughs> <laughs> Garman, right here. She lives there. Yes. Okay. It's not her bank, though. <laughs> we've we've spoken with the people at Welch State Bank. There. Uh, you know, I'm sure that a lot of the reason they gave the loan in the first place to the Waste Management Group was because of their confidence in the strength of the Cherokee Nation. So they have no issue with this. This is. Uh, they're perfectly fine with transferring it from one entity over to the Cherokee Nation proper. So we have been keeping our notes current and we still have the equipment. That's true. Yeah, everything is current. This is not caused by any um, financial uh, emergency or anything. It's just we're, we're planning a long-term change of the landfill anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we're changing our plans for how we're going to operate it. And so this is just part of closing up that LLC. We have to move this debt over because we can't close the LLC as long as there's this debt there. <laughs> In the future, are we going to consider every closing it down? Or are we just going to stay with the way we're operating it? Well, every landfill closes eventually. I mean, there's they, every landfill has a life cycle that it 
when you, when you sit down to, to plan a landfill, you should plan it um, out all of the, for 100 years worth of operations, closure, and post-closure, because it's a long-term business. So, um, But what there hasn't really been at Cherokee Nation is a long-term strategic plan for the landfill, and that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to go in and look at a closure and post-closure plan and set a date so we know, okay, the landfill, it was opened in the 80s. It can't run forever, so we're going to look at what is the best date to close that on, and that could be you know a five to ten year time span potentially looking at that. So, the, but those are not um, decisions that we have made right now. Sure. Well, I appreciate you even mentioning a closing date. I've been asking for this since 1975. <laughs> well, every, every landfill has to close eventually. So, what we need though is a strategic plan for operation, a plan for closure, and then a plan for post closure maintenance, which it will be 30 years. Messed up my years. swimming hole. <laughs> <laughs> I, and you know the per, the person I won't name the name, but when they put that landfill, I said, "Why don't you put it in your backyard?" <laughs> anyway, let's That's go. That's before my time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> yes, Councilor Lay. Yes, sir. Thank you, and and I've actually gotten some of those same kind of calls. Yes, right? even where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we we don't have a full completed game plan yet, I think is what you're saying. Right. On closure. Right. There, there are basically two things that we're going to be developing. One of them will be a business plan, and one of them will be a closure plan. The closure plan will be an engineering document that the engineers will help us put together saying, what is the existing footprint of the landfill, and how are we going to, what kind of engineering work do we need to do to, to do closure? So then we'll get a task list of things we need to do, and we can start scheduling that with the resources that we have available. Um, the other thing will be at the business plan, and that is something that's hard to do until we have the final volumes on the new cell, because there's a new cell being constructed right now at the landfill to take trash. Um, and when we have those final volumes, then we can come in to say, this is how much volume we want to take on a monthly basis or a yearly basis, and this is how much we're going to charge. Then we can really begin to put together a business plan that is based on the information that we correct information, because all we have right now are um, basically the the drawings show what it should be, what the volume should be, but after it's built, <coughs> that, that may change a little bit depending on what they find during the construction process. So, so those so are things we're, going, we're developing. We're, we have the cell now that's being utilized. Right. And But we're going to build a new cell? Well, that cell is just nearly out of space. I mean, they're... they're so, so now would be a good time to think about closing. Right. I mean, this... That, that's my opinion. But, so we're going to build a new cell, and that'll last for several more years. And, we're going to kick this can down the road and, and talk about closing it some other time. Well, the, to, this is the opposite of the kicking the can down the road strategy, to my mind. Um, the reason we're building a new cell is because if you close the landfill tomorrow, if we said we're going to close in 30 days, within 30 days after that day that you take that last barrel of trash, you have to have closure processes beginning on that landfill. You have to begin closure. That is a multi-million dollar operation at this point. And, and will it be the same multi-million dollar operation 10 years from now? No, because we're going to be, I'm going to be coming back here every year uh, or putting forth a budget to you to say, instead of paying $10 million now, let's pay a million dollars over the course of 10 years every year. And we're going to do the closure on the older cells that are already complete. Like we can that. do a lot of that closure work now. So by the time that cell is full, we'll have the landfill ready to close. So that $10 million price tag won't be on it anymore. We'll be within a million dollars or a million and a half of closure at How that point. How long will the new cell last? Well, that depends on how much trash we take. Right. So if we take a lot of trash. Made it six to seven years is what they're saying. I like your plan, though. I like the plan, but I'd like to hear some time. You know, most of us, I guess, will be off this council by then. It'll be somebody else's problem. But I, I hate kicking a can down the road. Well, I do, and too. that's all my, that's, that's where I'm coming. No, I, and Thank you. I mean, I, I completely agree with you in that. The last thing I want to do is kick the can down the road. I want to make substantial progress on closure at the landfill so that you have op the council, whoever those people are at that time, the council has the option to close it, and it's not $10 million away. It's within a feasible amount for them to say, okay, we're ready to close it. Let's close that landfill. And it's going to take financial resources, and it's going to take commitment by a group of people that we don't even know yet to continue to work toward closure for this to work. But I don't think it's an option to just continue to operate it the way it has been. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yes, Councillor Thornton. Yeah, uh, talking about kicking this can down the road, is there any way we can uh, kick that can over into federal government and get some grants to help us with that? Yes. Um, okay. well, we can't kick it on them, but we can certainly get assistance. And I've already applied for and Another reason to move the landfill over to the Cherokee Nation proper 
uh, was to be able to be uh, able to go out and get more of those grant applications in because there are grants that the Cherokee Nation as an entity is um, eligible to apply for that an entity that is for profit cannot apply for. So I've already applied for grant assistance and I'll probably hear on that in July and I will apply for every other grant I can possibly find that could help us achieve our goals here that to help good. cut that price tag down for Cherokee Nation. Thank you. Good. Councilor Jordan. Thank you for doing that. So we're gonna we're gonna do this without a business plan. You don't think it'd be better to have a business plan before we start moving money around? How much money are we moving? Well, this will be one and a half million dollar debt that the Cherokee Nation will be taking on, and then the budget, the FY17 budget for the landfill, will come before this council before too long. So, um, so when's, when's the business plan going to happen? So, so to do a business plan for the net for the new cell, we'll have to have the final volumes for that cell. And cell construction is going on right now, and we have estimated. I can do estimates for what the volume will be. But an actual business plan to get that done, I need to know what my final volume is. So I can say, okay, we're going to take X amount of trash per year for the next seven years. We're going to charge this rate for those tons. I can say at the end of those years, this landfill will be full. We'll have brought in this amount of money over that time period, and that's where we'll be. But until I have those volumes, I don't know how much trash we can put in to the landfill, um, to that particular cell, or what, or and I can't estimate revenues until I know what that volume is. But that that construction is underway right now, and as soon as the engineers are done, we can get a final volume on it. I'd just like to see a business plan before I, I do this. Yeah. I understand. Good. Anybody else? Yes, the Councilor Baker. Yes. Actually, the balance of the loan is a million one hundred and forty-five thousand. So it's not a million and a half that we're transferring. Right. Since they've already paid off 360000 Right. Or almost a fourth of it. Right. So it's only one million one forty five. Thank you. Good point. Anybody else? Yes. Councillor Hargis? Uh, Sarah, we're not asking for money at this point, mm -hmm. right? We're just asking to transfer the loan. And the payments are being made by the landfill, correct? Correct. Now, the landfill has received a, a, a carryover. They received, I think, $300,000 in carryover funding. Um, but, but yeah, they're still bringing in revenue and they're making the payments and we're not um, transferring, like it's not going to bring new indebtedness because the landfill will continue to operate and will continue to bring in revenue and those payments will continue to be made uh, based on the revenue of the landfill. But it's not, but the landfill is not profitable so there will be a certain amount of Cherokee Nation money going into that but that's going to happen regardless of whether it's there or whether it's here. Okay. okay. Uh, Councilor Austin? So, the real crux to this isn't the finance because the finance is there whether we do this or not. I mean, the money is obligated. The, the, the promise has been made. The real, cr the real crux of it is is eliminating the LLC. That, that's the end goal here. Uh, so eliminating the LLC does what for us? What are we accomplishing by doing that? So part of the um, reason that I think the landfill has struggled economically is because it, has, it, had incons it hasn't been property, properly capitalized, so it hasn't had enough money to capitalize the, its venture. So it operated for a long time without the proper equipment to compact. Um, and also it hasn't had a comprehensive plan, like we talked about, for closure. Where are we going with this landfill? What, are we, what is our business plan? The very things that they're bringing up, there's been an absence of that. I and mean, also when we've had a lot of political change, there'll be new people on the board. There just hasn't been a consistent operation. So what we're hoping to get out of this by bringing it over to Cherokee Nation again, is we're gonna get a consistent plan, one that the council and the administration, everyone understands this is the long-term plan that we're all bought into, that it's properly capitalized. We have access to the money we need to operate it properly. And that we have this sort of long-term, um, a strategic comprehensive plan for the operation of the landfill. Um, that, that we're all committed and bought into and we're all working toward the same goal. So that is what I think we hope to get out of this. So it currently is operated by a, uh, a board. Right. That board will be eliminated. Right. Okay, so it, it will be directly under the watch of your, your department. That's correct. And answerable to this body. Right. It'll be operated as a division of the Cherokee Nation, which it was for most of its life, but we're going to bring it back to that model. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Jordan. Today, what is that equipment worth? So. Today. We know what we give for it. Or right. What we all want it. Right. But today, what is it worth? I don't know. that I, I can't give you an estimate on that that I would have any uh, that I would have any basis for. I'd have to get with the landfill folks and somebody who knows heavy equipment better than I do I to give you an answer on that. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, <clears throat> they didn't give a whole lot of thought to the damage they were doing when they did this landfill. 
the, the, the traditional Cherokees in that area is they, they polluted Candy Mink Springs. It's where our people always went to get fresh water. Uh, low water bridge there by rock fence where a lot of our people still go today. Bradley Ford, that's the back, right there adjacent to Adair County. That's in my area. Uh, for a while, that water was really looking bad. It, it's making a comeback. That would be one of the happiest times for, for most of those people in the hills. I'll use the word in the hills if that landfill ever closes. And this is the first time I've really even gotten excited about anybody mentioning the landfill. And I'm glad you've, you've done some research on it. And, and when we're looking maybe sometime in the near future, you know, putting some closure to that. Uh, I don't know where our, 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 our businesses would go. I uh, don't have an answer for that, but maybe, you know, that's, that's, a, that's an answer for somebody else to handle. Well, I, I think that that's something we're going to have to talk with everybody in Adair County about as that, you know, time gets closer when the landfill does have to close. Um, you know, they're, they're, we'll have to discuss options with them. And, you know, Adair County is part of Cherokee Nation, and it's really important. And we're not just going to run away from the problems that are there. We're going to figure out some way to help work it out. I mean, that's our, that's our only option, I think. Mm -hmm. Sure. And the city of Tahlequah, I think that's... They have the contract with, with our landfill. I, uh, there are lots of there are lots of issues that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, what to do once the landfill's closed, and there are a lot of issues that we're going to regulatory issues and a lot of money that's going to have to be spent on that. So it's a it's a huge project that sure. we're looking at. Well, I'm glad you're know. undertaking it. Yes, Councilor Thor. Uh, what type of date would you set on maybe having an outline for a business plan? Um, that would be dependent somewhat on the construction of the of the cell and I can give I mean I certainly don't have a problem giving updates on where we're at with construction of the cell I want as soon as we get the budget approved I'd like to go ahead and get the engineering firm contacted to put together the comprehensive plan and those two documents will help inform the business plan I think so it'll be something that we're working on continuously once this you know once the when council you decides the sale will be finished if Jamie was here, he could tell you the date. I know they're working on it right now. It'll, they're building it. Um, they're, they're putting a lot of resources toward constructing it. I don't think it'll be more than a few months, but I don't have the final date in front of me. Okay. Can you have that the next meeting? Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Buzzer. Uh, I've listened to Sarah in her presentation, and I tend to agree with what Sarah and the got this plan together is good because. I'm dealing with the same thing at the solid waste area in Delaware County now. Solid waste people, they didn't have people on that board that were expertise in their field, so they didn't have an idea of what solid waste is going to do. Now, I'm not saying the board that was on the landfill committee over there didn't have the expertise about landfill, but apparently we never had anybody to bring a plan forward as to closure. And with, with LLC being paid off and brought under the nation, Ultimately, I thought we were responsible for it anyway. So to me, it's not going to make that much difference as far as paying the LLC. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is Sarah's a part an environmentalist, and she can tell us how that goes, and I think she can develop a plan on closing that landfill. Like, regardless, we have to keep it open for 30 years. We can limit what trash is going to go in there. The other thing I like about it is go ahead and do some of the closures on the existing sales. Get that done, or we don't have to pay the 5 to $10 million all at once. So I think the plan she's got is it's going to work. It's going to take time to do it. Although I, I feel like some of the council members here would like to see the plan up front, but it's not possible to do that without a new sale being built. So I understand it. So I, I'll be supporting this resolution, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Baker. Yes. And do you expect the equipment to last until the, the closure of the landfill? Yes. Um, it's my understanding that this is, you know, if we're looking at it, especially if we're looking at a, I think it'll be well used by the time the landfill gets ready to close. Um, if every, if we stick with this five to 10 year time frame we've discussed, because there's a tremendous amount of work that has to be done out there. So we have to have the equipment period, but it was bought new and they, and they, it's being properly maintained. So I think that the understanding is that it should last the life of the, of the landfill. If we may, if we keep to this five to 10 year time frame. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Councilor Garvin. Uh, I'm sure the bank had this property appraised, and uh, I don't know if they'd share it with uh, with us or not. But uh, I'd be interested, like uh, Councilman mentioned, knowing. Also, what items of equipment are we talking about? Really? Um, I've got a list right here, actually, of what was purchased at that time. 
a compactor, an excavator, an articulated truck, a dozer, and then all of the accessories and attachments that go with them. And there's the bow mag is the compactor is a bow mag, and the rest is all caterpillar equipment. Four big pieces. Yes, four big pieces. And I have, I'm sure that probably all of you would know better than I do. So I'm not really. A, Don't you feel like they had it appraised? Yes, I, I mean, the, and the people, I will say that the board, all of the people on the board are, are extremely competent and they kept, you know, they, they paid attention to the business dealings of there. They had routine meetings and they knew what was going on, but what they didn't have in front of them was capital. You know, they never had really the funding that they needed to operate it um, the way that they wanted to. And they couldn't overcome some of the barriers that they had with the location of the landfill, the roads out to the landfill. There were just a lot of issues that they had to deal with. But I feel like the board put forth their maximum effort to do a good job at the jobs they were appointed to do. I just, I don't want any of this. The landfill hasn't been profitable. I don't mean it to be a critique of them. I think they did a good, an excellent job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Yes, Councilor Thornton. Yes, I think when we started this, uh, this council was uh, more or less told that uh, we could either buy this equipment we close the landfill and closing the landfill would cost us money like we had the millions of dollars to close it and uh, so we bought the equipment for a loan so i think if i really like the way you're thinking and your business sense but uh i'm so appreciative that you're in that position because we hadn't had anyone in your position that would take care of business like you're taking care of and I appreciate that sir I'm certainly trying thank you I agree with that okay we have a motion and a second and we've had our discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed aye one two I'm going to abstain okay one abstention two opposition two all right thank you very much keep us updated i will appreciate it okay uh item number five uh councillor hargis would you cover me on that this is a legislative act amending title 12 of the cherokee nation code annotated civil procedure i put that in the form of a motion got a motion second got a second discussion yes councillor becker this is but 26 pages of additional law added. And it is, an, and I do have, you know, not just questions, but I actually would like it explained each section to us, to, which I know is going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it's important enough law that we, I think we need to spend the time on it. Okay. We can be brief today in, uh, uh, and then we can take this back with us and discuss it at a at our next meeting. That give us uh, enough time, I think. But uh, uh, Mr. A.G., would you explain the narrative of this? Absolutely, and uh, I, I would totally agree with uh, uh, Councilman uh, Baker. Uh, this is an important piece of legislation. It, it deals with the due process rights of our citizens. Uh, there is no emergency or rush for this. Uh, take it, read it. Yeah, it, as as you go through it, if there's questions, email them uh, to me. We, me or my staff, will will answer uh, will answer them fully, uh, and we can come back uh, as many times as as, as council and this committee needs, or we can set a special date for it. Again, uh, they're probably you know as uh, as to the workings of government, uh, there are very few pieces of legislation that, that are more important. You know, your election code may be more, it's just as important. This allows the process by which citizens bring their grievances to court. So it should not be taken lightly. It should be thoroughly discussed and, 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 and vetted completely. There are new provisions in this, uh, provisions that, uh, in, in my opinion, make this uh, a very progressive civil code. Uh, we've reviewed other uh, civil codes of other uh, other tribal nations in other states, uh, in, in, in other uh, states of the union. This code, I want it to be on par with, not just on par, I want it to be better than everyone else's. Uh, so uh, 
Mr. Chairman, what I would, would suggest at, at, at this stage is, 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 is for today's purposes, uh, I just doing what I'm doing right now, introduce, introduce the act. Uh, you, you've had it in your packet. Uh, if, there's, uh, if there's any questions right now to answer, mm -hmm. but that we set this for the, uh, the, the next, next month. That's uh, what we were looking at. If the, uh, we do not have the, the cultural uh, tourism uh, committee meeting next month, we could do it at 11 o'clock, uh, same time as we did the culture meeting today. If that's if that's okay with everyone, have a special session June, for for this. That, that. You want to do a special session, or you just want to start the regular meeting at eleven instead of one? Whatever the pleasure is of the committee. It's your choice, Mr. Chair. I say we just take on this item. Um, the special to yes. Yeah. Yes. It's June thirty. And and before that meeting again, if there's uh, questions as you're going through it, email them to me. Uh, okay. And you know, there, and if there are uh, an amendments or deletions that you would like to see, let us know, because yeah, we 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 want this to be uh, a very well thought out piece of legislation, sure. and we should get a decision on on Dollar General next next week. I really do believe that okay. we're, that that is imminent, and that may lead us some guidance as to what we may want to uh, uh, add further to this piece of legislation. Is 23rd look good? That's that's. The 30th. Is it the 30th? Okay, that would be the 30th. That's on a Thursday. Okay. June 30th on Thursday. Oh, uh, with, with with that, I would entertain any questions, or we can we can wait till June 30th. Okay. We we'll just okay table till the 30th. Motion table to the 30th. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All opposed. Okay. Any announcements? Okay, next meeting will be June the 30th. Motion to adjourn. 3 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are